Greetings, Pokemon Masters. I'm Professor Cedar, your guide on this incredible journey through the world of Pokemon. Ready to evolve your knowledge and embark on an adventure filled with mystery and wonders? Every episode will hatch new discoveries, share unbelievable tales, and maybe even encounter a few legendary Pokemon along the way. But remember, trainers, while we dive deep into the heart of the world of Pokemon, our adventures and discoveries about card values, strategies, and other Pokemon phenomenon are based on opinion and meant strictly for entertainment and are not those of the Pokemon Company or any of their subsidiaries. It's always best for you, the viewer, to do your own research on these topics. Useful links will always be provided in the video description to help guide your journey. If you find our content helpful, entertaining, or informative, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and click on the notification bell to stay up to date with our regularly posted content. If you want to make suggestions for upcoming videos or provide feedback on how the video or the channel can improve, leave a comment. Now with all that out of the way, let's leap into the unknown and uncover the mysteries of the world of Pokemon together. Until our paths cross again, keep on training and exploring. Oh, hello. I didn't realize you arrived already. Wonderful. Well, have a seat. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Professor Cedar. I'm an official Pokemon professor, which means I'm registered and certified by the Pokemon Company International to organize Pokemon leagues and tournaments. Um, so uh, apparently you're interested in Pokemon. Uh, since we're just getting started here, this is the perfect time for you to sit in to lecture number one. Pokemon, what is it? And how to get started. All right. So, first of all, Pokemon is divided into, well, quite a few categories these days. Um, since... We're now so long down the timeline. Wow, it's wonderful. There's so many different ways we can enjoy Pokemon. Well, we may as well get started. And I'd like to say from the very beginning, um, definitely choose what you like to enjoy and choose what speaks to you the most. As Pokemon and its world is quite vast, so it's up to us to decide which sector of the Pokemon universe we enjoy. All right. So, Pokemon originally started as three main categories. Uh, back all the way approximately 1996 in Japan, Definitely feel free to leave a comment if you know the true date of origin of Pokemon. Um, I'm just going by the copyright date of the of the trading cards. Uh, but feel free to check encyclopedias, Wikipedia, however you want to go about your day. Um, and definitely correct me in the comments below. Um, but back then... We had three main aspects of the game, which was the animated series, uh, possibly also known as a cartoon. Again, comments. It's all right. Leave it in the comments. I know you want to tell me it's not a cartoon, it's an anime. For simplicity's sake, I will call it a cartoon. All right. And then we have the video game championships. With the video game championships, VGC for short, uh, we are specifically referring in present day to Nintendo Switch Scarlet and Violet, which is the latest game title in the series. Uh, and a long time ago, back near the start of Pokemon, it was only on handheld consoles, which would include things like 
Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, Nintendo 3DS, etc. So, traditionally, we know Pokemon VGC to be a handheld activity, a handheld gaming activity. However, in today's day and age, our Nintendo Switch has the power of connecting to a TV, which is quite awesome if you ask me. And then we have the trading card game, uh, also referred to as TCG. So, quite awesome. Uh, and then in our modern times, we have a couple new official formats of the uh, World of Pokemon that are also celebrated during Worlds uh, and other official uh, events. So we have Pokemon Unite, which is available on the mobile devices, Nintendo Switch, um, and then Pokemon Go, which is for mobile. Uh, you can walk around. It's got augmented reality. It's quite wonderful. Um, but those of you who know me and who have come to see me, uh, I happen to specialize in the TCG. Although my knowledge is quite vast on, I would say, three of the five categories, um, I have specialized in trading card games. So perhaps in the future, we might talk about the other categories. But for now, we are going to be talking about trading card game. Now... You may be wondering, well, I opened a few packs of cards and now I've got some. What do I do with them? So this is where I wanted to talk to you about what we can do with our cards. All right. Typically, I tell people there's three ways to enjoy Pokemon trading cards. Um, and actually, one of the ways is basically just enjoying all of the ways together all right so uh we can collect our cards we can use binders or collector albums uh and put sleeves protectors on our cards and place them in the binders or boxes and we collect them and cherish them that is great uh next we can trade our collection with our friends family other Pokemon League members, other people at tournaments, etc. Trading, all right? Uh, and then play. Pokemon Trainer Club is where you could go to learn more about play, uh, which is great. So if you ever visit Pokemon.com, you can click the login button and then it will ask you if you have an account. You can go through those uh, steps to create your trainer club account. All right, so when we talk about collecting Pokemon cards, the traditional way of getting Pokemon cards is through the various sealed products that are brought to us by the Pokemon company. So we have some examples behind me, um, and this would be the most common all right so when we see this here typically at a store it opens up to have 36 packs like this each pack comes with 10 additional game cards this one in particular this is from generation 8 so it has a different format than the kinds you would pull out of this box, which is in Generation 9. So, I'm actually going to be telling you the current format and not the Sword and Shield format, just so as you open packs, you'll be seeing what I'm talking about, all right? So, I'll just put that away there and let's begin. All right, so when we open a pack of cards, we're going to be getting five common cards, three uncommon cards, two reverse hollow cards, which could be any rarity, and one hollow card, which is our rare card. All right, so that's the current format of 
Pokemon trading card game booster packs. All right, well, common, uncommon, rare, Professor Cedar, what could you be even talking about? All right, so I have drawn some little pictures here and I will be pointing out what it all means, but we have a circle representing common, we have a diamond representing uncommon, and a star representing rare. So I'm going to be showing you this cute little houndoor. And while we have this houndoor over here, uh, we have the format of a card. All right, and all the way near the bottom of the card, on the bottom left, we can find a set and a collector number and the rarity. So in this case, this Houndour is a common Pokemon card. All right. Next, we have our uncommons and rares. Uh, those would all look the same, but the other thing I mentioned that might have come to confuse you or not, um, but I'll still explain it. We have our hollow and reverse hollow. So back to our Houndour, mostly because we're on the camera and I don't know if you'd be able to see it anyways. Uh, so I'm just gonna show you on the Houndour. Uh, in the format of the Pokemon card, we have a bordered picture frame near the top center of the card, just under the name of our Pokemon. So when we talk about hollow cards, the inside of the picture frame, around and through the Pokemon, we would see it shiny. I'm sure you've even noticed some yourself. So that shininess inside the picture of the Pokemon, that's called hollow. Now, reverse hollow is exactly how it sounds. When we see the shine outside of the picture frame, but not inside, that would be our reverse hollow. All right. So now you might say to me, Professor Cedar, well, are all Pokemon cards quite simple, like this Houndour? On the contrary, there's various forms of Pokemon cards that go beyond the rarity of rare. We have rares called ultra rares. A basic ultra rare might look something like this Umbreon VMAX. And as you can see, there's no picture frame. The art sort of flows through the whole card. And the star is a shiny silver. So that would be an ultra rare. All right. Uh, beyond ultra rare, we have our special sets, sometimes known as special illustrators. In this case, this one is called a trainer gallery. I can find that information in the collector number. I'll be describing that momentarily here. Uh, but then it goes all the way into things like full arts, like this full art Colrus and this full art Pierce cards. There's various full arts and sometimes a whole set could be reprinted as all full arts and uh, we would then be opening packs, chasing every single full art to complete our sets. Um, and again, we'll be talking about that momentarily. Uh, but then beyond that, um, we have things like rainbow rares, which as you can see, the whole card is this ghostly rainbow, delightful design. And then we have our gold secret rares, okay? So, um, that's where we, that's what brings us into talking about sets and collector numbers, which as we talk about collecting, there's various ways people like to collect. So, we already talked about rarity. Some people just get a album, a collector album, and just store all their cards in there. 
Um, but as you gain more of an abundance of cards, you might be more selective of what cards end up in your album. Uh, and in that case, you might only want to put your fancier ones, like your ultra rares, secret rare, secret gold rares, secret rainbow rares, and full arts. Um, but there's another subject of collecting that has been known to be the more skilled way of collecting. Personally, I don't embark on this journey except for specific sets. I don't myself like to go all out on every set. And the reason is, is there's quite a few sets out there and it might be a daunting task to complete every single set. So that's called mastering a set. All right. So now, as I showed you, we had our fusion strike pack or we have this scarlet and violet booster box which has 36 booster packs all right so every set has a title all right and um i may as well bring this up a little bit um so pokemon started quite a long time ago but basically every two years is a new generation give or take sometimes even give or take a year. Some generations are fast, some generations are slow. So, between those generations, there are sets of cards. And usually the generation will be the title of the set, and then there will be a subtitle of the set. So, with this Fusion Strike set, it is known as Sword and Shield, Fusion Strike. There was also Sword and Shield, Brilliant Stars. There was also Sword and Shield, Vivid Voltage. All right. Um, we can find this information on a card. It was a little bit more difficult in the past, but nowadays, A, we have the internet, and B, uh, in the most recent generation, they just started using um, the name of the set with a, a lettered code on every collector number. So, what is a collector number, you might ask? All right. So, down at the bottom where I showed you the rarities, there's also a collector number. On older cards, the collector number and the rarity will be on the bottom right of the card. Whereas on the newer cards, which we most commonly see these days, uh, it would be on the bottom left. And it's always in the format of a numerator and denominator. Or if it's a promo in these days, it'll say something like SVP001 meaning it's a promo. A promo would be a card. Where's a nice little box I'd like to show you? Here we go. So a promo card would be one that's featured inside a windowed promo box. Sometimes it's a box, sometimes it's a tin. They've done various, uh, various formats. Uh, and that's where you would find where the collector number is. It'll be a few letters, then a few numbers versus the collector number. Now, why is this significant? All right. So when we talk about collecting, especially when we talk about collecting a set, we would then go and collect one slash 102. By the way, the set that's most famous for having the denominator is the base set, which was the first set we saw here in North America and the first set uh, they saw over in Japan. Um, so that set ended in 102. All right. So we're going to now break down how to read the collector number. So... We have 
a different way we could read it. When we read it out loud, we don't say 1 slash 102. We say 1 of 102. And the reason we read it like that is because that card, 1 of 102, is the first card out of 102 different cards of that set. So when we go to master a set, we would then get 2 of 102, 3 of 102, and we'd store it in our binder or our albums, etc. All right, so that is known as mastering a set. Once again, personally, I don't try to master every set. I do have some sets that I have mastered. Um, typically, the ones I try to master are things like the McDonald's sets or uh, a while ago, there was a set known as Celebrations. Um, I will try to master those. They seem to be a little less daunting, uh, especially to me. Um, because I can't seem to find myself searching for, uh, nowadays, over 300 cards in the set. Um, so, mastering a set. Uh, then, as we already talked, some people just collect their favorites, whether it's just ultra rares or just a specific Pokemon. In my case, I collect Umbreon. I've got my Umbreon friends up there. Uh, my favorite Umbreon is Shining Umbreon. I have one I take around with me in Pokemon Go. His name is Alucard. Uh, you probably will hear me talking about Al here and there throughout the show. Um, so you could just collect your favorites. You could master sets um, or just open packs, see what you get and keep them all in your binder. Collecting is quite fun, um, but now it's time to talk about trading and playing. All right, so when we talk about trading, I want to cover that in a totally different video, but basically the way I recommend is this is where, especially if you're a youngster, get your parents' help. Have them try their very best, or in, in the very near future, I will be posting a video about this, but you could at least try your very best to go on the internet and search your card and figure out what its secondary market value could possibly be, and then decide if I want to keep this card at home safe in my private collection or in my personal collection. And then I could make a separate binder or album of cards that I'm all right with trading. All right. And get your parents help. Or, you know, if you're already an adult, uh, I encourage you to at least uh, take the liberty of um, just not regretting any trades you make out there. Um, be safe. All right. Uh, we'll... Trust me, we'll have a full video on trading coming really soon. But for now, just be safe out there, all right? And then finally, my favorite subject, which is play. Yes, Pokemon cards are a game. Hence the name trading card game. All right, so... Um, Let's start with talking about the formats because I could run through them quite quickly and then uh, get into talking about how nice of a long journey there could be. Kitchen table simply means your kitchen table. Play together with friends or family in an unofficial format. All right. Uh, I just played a game with my cousin today that is called kitchen table, or at least commonly called kitchen table. Some people might call it living room table. Some people might call it living room floor. Some people might call it picnic table. 
I'm not sure, call it as you will, kitchen table, all right? Then we have Pokemon League, all right? You can go to Pokemon.com by clicking Play Pokemon, and then near the bottom there, there will be something called Find Events. Uh, and then you could find a league uh, and other events uh, through going through there. I'll leave a link in the description below leading you directly to the event finder. So you could find some organized play near you. Um, but league. League is not structured in a competitive way. It's a fun, friendly environment for you to practice a new deck or to make trades with friends, or to just enjoy the world of Pokemon. You could even bring your Nintendo Switch to a Pokemon League and play Pokemon on your Nintendo Switch at Pokemon League. All right, Pokemon League is a community, fun, friendly, casual Pokemon setting, all right? Now, the great thing about Pokemon League is there's usually a professor there which will help you decide if a trade you're about to make is fair. Uh, all Pokemon Leagues must be held in a local game store, also referred to as an LGS, um, a place where they likely sell Pokemon trading card game product, uh, such as sleeves, binder pages, binders, but also booster packs, etc. So you could then ask the shopkeep or the Pokemon professor, hey, is this a fair trade? Uh, or if you've met friends there and your friends happen to be knowledgeable, you could ask your friends, hey, I'm about to make this trade. Do you think it's a fair trade? Um, I always recommend you trade based on card value, not quantity of cards. Uh, but of course, it always has to come down to you making the final decision yourself. We will talk about that uh, in a different video. So Pokemon League uh, is a great place to play Pokemon, especially for beginners. All right, next we have tournaments. There is a bunch of tournament uh, settings and uh, they go all the way from locals, which are also casual. However, they are structured meaning it's not free play when you come in you register to the professor and they run their tournament operation software and it pairs you up against various opponents throughout uh typically half an hour intervals uh in a swiss format sometimes single elimination depending on uh the style of tournament you've entered and at the very end, uh, we have a winner. If it's a paid tournament, usually you're paying to play in the tournament and you are awarded packs at the end of playing the tournament. Uh, or if it's a free casual tournament, you might just get a prize pack for fun, uh, for coming out and supporting your local game store. Next, we have League Challenges. League Challenges can only happen at a league location and they award you with championship points. You can play in as many league challenges as you'd like to gain championship points onto your profile on your Pokemon Trainers Club account. Uh, and by earning championship points, uh, you could earn your way into worlds. All right, we'll go into far greater detail um, in future videos about the competitive levels of Pokemon. Uh, this is a general outline. Uh, challenges can happen once a month per league location. Cups are once per quarter, meaning every three months you can have a cup at a league location. And then regionals happen once per year within that region. Uh, nationals happen once per year within that nation, and then worlds happen once per year in the world. Uh, typically, regionals don't align, so they you if you have the resources to travel 
to various regions. Um, you could then play in multiple regions within a year. Uh, same with nationals. Um, and then there is only one world and it happens typically at a different spot in the world once a year. Our last uh, worlds happened in Japan. All right. So there's one last thing we didn't talk about, which isn't on this whiteboard here. And that's known as uh, and not exclusive to trading card game. Um, it actually entails the whole thing. Uh, but it's definitely worth it if you are wanting to take that lifelong journey, the lifelong hobby path. There is the Pokemon Professor. I can't spell. Program. All right, so what is the Pokemon Professor program? Well, that's how I became a Pokemon Professor. And it's for those of us who don't want to necessarily be in the competitive scene as a player. We might want to become a Pokemon Professor to be in the competitive scene as a community leader or as a judge, uh, or as an organizer. Um, and we then still get the opportunity to attend all these various events and organize things all the way from our local leagues to local tournaments. But we might even possibly uh, end up judging or organizing at the Worlds. All right, so that's another story for another video but the professor program does exist and i can leave links below uh, in the description for you to have resources if that's the path you want to take um, so that was our not so brief brief introduction into pokemon um but we wanted to get started somehow and lead into our favorite part of the Pokemon world. Um, but there's, there's just way too much content to cover in one video. And I hope you'll stick around, follow my journey as we go into more detail on the various subjects. I'd like to mention, I do have a little bit of a curriculum, so to speak, uh, of the next few videos. But after that, we're going to free flow and, and do things uh, uh, less strictly. But for now, I would like to cover some of these topics uh, in more detail. And that wraps up our Pokemon adventure for today. I hope you discovered something new and had as much fun as I did. Remember, everything we discussed today is meant to spark your curiosity and bring us together in the Pokemon community. If you enjoyed our journey, please like this video, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to never miss out on our upcoming adventures. Your support means the world to me and helps me bring even more Pokemon mysteries to light. Don't forget to check the video description for useful links and resources. And as always, keep on training and exploring. Catch you again. Yeah. I think that's basically it.